and God is in everybody. So there is goodness and truth and beauty in everybody. And I think if we're not open to it in other people, we're, we're missing part of the picture, you know? So I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's easy to say that it's a whole mm-hmm. nother thing to live it out. But I just think you got to be, you got to have your convictions and you got to pursue truth, but you also got to delight in other people. Mm-hmm. And even in their quirks and even in their weird opinions. I, I just think I just think if we can't delight in other people, people need to be delighted in. I mean, I know yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if all I ever feel is judged, I'm not gonna want to spend a lot of time around you, you know? Yeah. Well, I think you're a delightful Dom. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said because about meeting people and delighting them because that's what Jesus did, right? He's like, hey, Samaritan woman, let's have a talk. Like, hey, tax collector, you know, I'm coming to your house tonight, you know? And everyone's like, Jesus, what are you doing? Do you know who he is? Do you know who she is? And then he's like, yeah, we're going to dinner. Come on. We can all come, you know? So I, and again, not that Jesus was you know, permissive of sin. He calls people to repentance, but the first thing he does is just what you say. He delights them. Like he meets them and he loves them first. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I I have this quote from uh, St. John Paul II that I I use in, I feel like every other episode, but it says, man cannot live without love. He remains a being that is incomprehensible for himself. His life is senseless. If love is not revealed to him, if he does not encounter love, if he does not experience it and make it his own, if he does not participate, intimately in it. And Mm -hmm. if we cut ourselves off and we're just like, all right, I'm in Catholic world with, you know, my little sect of Catholics who think the exact same way I do, or my same set of people that think the exact same way I do, we are denying people, not just love, but like comprehension of their own lives, right? Like when we love people, we are making the world make more sense for them. Right. Mm. And we, when we participate in love. It makes, it just makes the world make more sense. You know, when you, when we say that the world is senseless, what do we mean? It means we look around and it's like, why are, why is it like this? Why are people treating themselves this way? Like love makes the world and makes ourselves make sense. So. Yes. Yeah. I think that's why love one another was such a central command. I, I think when he says, I have a new command for you, you know, it's like we, we kind of skip over that. Right. But the, the word new for us is just sort of a casual kind of slightly updated a little bit better than the last version but uh the original you know kind of if you look at the greek you look at the hebrew the word that he's using there new is more like revolutionary or groundbreaking so he's like i have this revolutionary groundbreaking command for you i have this command that's going to change everything and you can imagine they're like they're thinking, well, this is the guy who multiplied, you know, the loaves and fish and he walked on water and he cast out demons. And now he's saying he's got something that's really going to change everything. So they're thinking like, whatever is coming next is going to be the most incredible thing. And then he says, love one another. That was this big groundbreaking thing he wanted to share with them. And I, I don't, I don't think that that's just kind of a nice little hallmark Christian, you know, postcard. I think, I think it's the most radical thing we can do to be loved to one another, knowing that, that who among us is really capable of being loved, of, of loving unconditionally and who among us is really worthy of being loved unconditionally. Um, and yet we have to do it anyway. It's the way we're loved by God and it's the way that he wants us to love others. So um, it would be great if everybody could experience the fullness of, of God in their own personal prayer life. But for most people, they're going to need somebody from the outside treating them like Jesus, you know, dude, preach brother preach. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. What, what it reminds me of, you know, that, that, that love is revolutionary. Um, it reminds me of that, that verse where Jesus says, you know, if the disciples say to him, uh, you know, if Jesus Lord increase our faith. And he's like, all, all you need is faith, the size of a mustard seed. And you can like tell that tree to get up and mm-hmm. go into the sea. And we hear that and we think, oh, if I just believed harder, if I was just had fewer doubts or certainty in my head, but, but what is faith? It's, it's not just like how certain you are, but it is acting even when you're uncertain. And like those daily acts of love, if we just are faithful to those daily acts of love, like that's what's going to move a mountain, right? By his grace. It's, again, it's not something we can do on our own. It needs to be steeped in prayer and the sacraments and the community. That's how we're fueled up. But it's those daily acts of loving people, loving our neighbor. That's what's revolutionary. I, I, I love it. I, love it. I, I take my time, flex like whoa. I take my time, jet, let's go. I take my time, flex like whoa. Turn up by door.